Coming up in the morning edition. Every month it seems to get pushed back rather annoyingly. The tourism minister frustrated over the lack of movement in the cruise industry. Also, this is wonderful to see democracy work. It's inauguration day in the United States and sometimes you may not be able to save. You may need to restructure some stuff. Planning ahead in a cold environment. We have those stories and much, much more when the morning edition comes. We're right back. First, it's more than just our name more than just our achievements. It's our nature, and it's where we put our customers. At Bahamas First, we've refreshed our look, but our nature remains the same. We design insurance solutions that protect our customers from life's uncertainties, whatever they may be. We equip you for the future so that you can recover stronger. Bahamas First, what's first for you comes first for us. You are a healthcare worker, Thank you for fighting on the front lines against COVID-19. It is normal to feel stressed when taking care of others who don't feel well. But remember to take care of yourself. Don't forget to rest between shifts, eat healthy meals, engage in physical activity, and stay connected to family and friends. Avoid harmful coping strategies like drinking alcohol. For managers of healthcare workers, the same tips apply to you. Here's how you can help. Consistently give updates. Rotate staff between high and low stress level functions. Encourage work breaks and ensure that they know where they can find help. We are here for you. Explore the world of agriculture with us. Join me, your host, Carla Palmer, for continued adventures in agriculture and the marine environment as we head into season two of the program, Agriculture Now. That's Agriculture Now, moving to a new date and time, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m., right here on the ZNS Television Network. Good morning, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis, and welcome to the morning edition. Taking a look at your weather forecast this morning, a stalled frontal boundary will continue to weaken near the southeast Bahamas, while a high-pressure system just north of the area dominates weather conditions across the majority of the island chain through tonight. We'll get up to a high today of 77 degrees with an overnight low of 63 degrees. Let's take you out to our streets this morning. We're Lloyd Allen and the morning traffic team is standing by with your Wednesday morning traffic. The traffic report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance. Today, tomorrow. Yes, good morning, LaDon. Good morning, Bahamas. A great start to your hump one estate. And we're giving you your first look at traffic. This one coming in from the intersection of Prince Charles Drive and Fox Hill Road. Now, it's similar to the scene we were at yesterday. That's East Street and Soldier Road, where significant traffic was uh, traversing through that area. Today, we have many motorists coming out of areas like Eastern New Providence, uh, Elizabeth Estates, as well as Winton Meadows. And uh, we want to caution those uh, motorists as you're making your rounds uh, to your destination this morning to drive with caution and care to arrive alive. Today, we're also joined by Corporal Christopher Wimps from the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division, who's giving us an update on traffic development over the past 24-hour period. Uh, good morning, Lloyd. Good morning, Bahamas. Uh, we're happy to report that we had no matters reported overnight. However, over 24-hour period, we have a total of six accidents, five of which were accidents with minor damages and one with minor injuries. Uh, at this time, we still have about 16 persons at the hospital as a result of those RTAs. All right. Well, again, uh, Officer Wims, uh, as we were discussing this morning, uh, here from this major highway, Prince Charles Drive, and considering others, like the east-west highway, um, persons uh, tend to go with significant speed, and uh, we want to caution drivers, uh, particularly those who are merging or switching lanes. Now, of course, you're already aware that you need to use a signal as you're uh, changing from one lane to the next. But any bits of advice for drivers to uh, 
transition nice and smoothly to avoid any possible collisions? Well, when you're traveling on any highway, you are 30, 40 miles an hour. Uh, we try to ask person to establish two car lengths before taking over just to get around and uh, make sure they estimate the right space that they can get into that the other lane. Go ahead and estimate another two car lengths behind you so you can just smooth transition in and out while signaling. This should make uh, life much easier for you because if you were to drive behind someone and they miss your top brakes and you don't have that two car lens, imagine what could happen as a result of you not doing the two car lens. So we try to ask people to be cautious, be safe, be courteous to others, you know? And this should make life much better for us all. And then again, another reminder for motorists, of course, uh, as they use their signals, to also use your rearview mirror, as many mirrors as possible to see uh, uh, in front of you, on the side of you, but also behind you. That's very crucial for drivers. Yes, uh, those, those rearview mirror, side view mirrors, they are there for a reason. I also tell people, when making a left or right turn, those side mirrors are crucial. All right? We drive on the left side of the road, so if you're going to make a right turn, Please ensure that you look at the right side view mirror to make sure that no car is overtaken. That could save plenty accidents because too many, too often that we see accidents happen just like that. So we just want to keep everybody safe. That is our mission. That is our goal to, to make sure everybody drive to arrive alive. Well, thank you so much for that update, Officer Worms. And of course, uh, that's been your first look at traffic on this Wednesday morning. LaDon, back to you guys in studio. Stop this morning with global cruises still on hold because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Many people are wondering when the cruise ships will return, particularly here in the Bahamas. This as concerns over fresh outbreaks of COVID prompted the Centers for Disease Control to extend a no-sail order until September of last year. However, some cruise operators have taken it a step further and canceled cruises until December of this year. Here's Tourism Minister the Honorable Dionisio Diagular on the anticipated return of cruises to the Bahamas. The cruise ships are very much in the grasp of the CDC. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control in the United States, is the entity that is going to evaluate whether the crew when and if a cruise company can resume its service. And every month it seems to get pushed back rather annoyingly, but there's nothing we can do about that here except wait until that process uh, um, um, finishes and the cruise companies can resume. Apparently they have a path to complete, they are in the process of completing that path, but exactly when they will resume their service is anyone's guess. Minister Diagular also provided an update on the new requirement for travelers entering the United States. On the 26th of January, the United States is going to require all persons entering the United States to have either a PCR or a rapid antigen test. Thank God we included that as part of our protocols because we are well positioned with approximately 80 healthcare providers to provide that test easily and seamlessly. We had some bumps in the road with the government clinics, but certainly our private sector operators are fulfilling the gap relatively well. There are some islands that don't have private healthcare providers, so we're going to have to liaise with the Ministry of Health to enhance the services that are provided by those clinics. A new U.S. president taking office today, Joe Biden, will be sworn in as a 46th president of the United States on the west front of the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. Kamala Harris will also be sworn in as a new vice president, making history as the first female, first black person, and first South Asian to hold that position. This as current president Donald Trump leaves office today. Now the inauguration will look a little different this year with a scaled back ceremony and heavy security after insurrectionists stormed the Capitol building and tried to overturn the election results some two weeks ago. The tourism minister Dionisio Diagular had this to say on today's inauguration. It's, it's wonderful to see democracy work and it seems as if the United States is having a peaceful transfer of government which happens in all democratic countries and so we are fully supportive of that. Thousands of women around the world, like myself, are adorned in their pearls to honor the first female vice president-elect of the United States, Kamala Harris, and to also empower others. We also spoke to Bahamas ambassador to the United States, His Excellency Sidney Colley. He told the morning team during an interview from Washington, D.C. yesterday that the Bahamas will be well represented.
On the 6th of January, there was a serious breach of Capitol Hill uh, into the building, and uh, five people lost their lives, including one Capitol Hill police officer and a former veteran of the armed forces. So no one is taking anything for granted. We are hoping for the best. I will be attending the inauguration. And the protocol is extremely stringent. Starting at 7.15 tomorrow morning, about five different levels of security before we get to the State Department. Then we put on a bus and take in downtown. When I say we, that's the diplomatic corps. Bohemian students studying in the Washington, D.C. district weighing in on the historic inauguration of the 46th president of the United States, first medical student at Howard University and Bohemian swimmer Fario Cooper and junior at the Morgan State University, Taylor Clare, both say they're excited to witness history. Everyone is experiencing a mix of emotions, excitement, uneasiness, hopefulness. But I can say as a black Bohemian living in Washington, D.C. right now, also as a recent Howard alumnus and a current medical student, that the Howard community feels pure pride and joy in witnessing one of our own, Kamala Harris, ascending to one of the highest seats in the U.S. government. I'm happy to see the change of power, and I hope that we can mend international relations through Biden's administration. Being over here at this time makes me feel uncertain due to all the changes happening, and even more at all the things that need to change in order for us to have a bright future. Seeing the first black vice president being sworn in inspires me to never give up. This is showing every black woman in America courage. It also sets a presidency of gender equality in politics. Hopefully this is a sign of seeing our first female prime minister soon. Stay close. The morning edition is back right after this. Love is in the air everywhere. And here at the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, we are bringing you a ZNS Valentine special. My Blind Valentine follows the story of two individuals who test their dating skills on a blind date and possibly find their one true love. Viewers will also be eligible for prizes. All you have to do is send a photo of you and your Valentine to web production at ZNSBahamas.com saying why you love that person and one winner will be announced at the end of each show. Remember to mark the date on your calendar, February 10th and 11th, for a TV special like no other and a chance to win. My Blind Valentine. Love is in the air with ZNS and the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Back to the morning edition. A police walkabout taking place on Tuesday in the Camp Road area trying to bring the community together in the fight against crime. Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of community relations and reservists, Theophilus Cunningham, led the initiative. One of our biggest challenges um, from our experience is basically ensuring, ensuring that the criminals continually know that the police presence is always available, that we presently always in their communities, we're reaching out to them, we're trying to get them to desist from crime. And somehow that can be a challenge for a person who's lived all his life committing crime. Social activist Carlos Reed and the shock treatment family are mourning the loss of one of their own. Candice Aaliyah, known as Pearl Smith, was found dead in a car with her hands tied on a track road near Marshall Road earlier this week. Reed says Pearlene appeared on the girls episode of the program and was showing lots of promise and transformation during her rehabilitation efforts. We want to express our condolences to the family. I believe that we are the crossroad in our country where each one of us need to step up. Each one of us need to decide that we're going to be or do what we can to enhance the development of this country. Too many of our young people are, too many of our young people are dying in our streets. 
Reed gave these strong words of wisdom to Bahamian women and some comfort to the family of the country's latest murder victim. Maximize your potential, man. Go after your purpose, or you can end up going to the graveyard early. May her soul rest in peace. May her family find some comfort in these times and know that uh, you are in our press. We understand what pain feels like. Issues surrounding violence against women back in the forefront once again after the latest homicide on Marshall Road. Zonta Bahamas is the advocacy group leading the way for change. We seek to work in harmony with the Department of Gender and Family Affairs, the Crisis Center, the Salvation Army, and other NGOs. And this year, we are hoping that as we plan for this year that we are able to assist in a greater capacity as it relates to supporting safe houses and or the building of safe houses for women. An investigation underway into a video that went viral on social media alleging abuse at a local children's home. Minister of Social Services and Urban Development, the Honorable Frankie Campbell, maintains that this is totally unacceptable. It was suggested that it was the Children's Emergency Hostel. As a result of that, um, I caused some preliminary inquiries to be done. And those inquiries suggested to me that it is necessary to launch a full investigation. And so that investigation commences this morning. I want to make it clear that in no way, form, or fashion do we support any form of abuse against children, adults, girls, boys, women? No form of violence or abuse. We do not support it. Stay close. We've got more right after this. You're watching The Morning Edition. The most important question that you could ever ask is why. Somebody wants you to join the gang? Why? Somebody wants you to use stove? Why? Somebody wants you to go on a move with them? Why? I've met so many people that messed up their future by not asking that question. People are now blind, confined to wheelchairs in prison, and even dead because they fail to ask the question, why? I mean, it's your future. Shouldn't you at least know why you mess it up? But let me ask you a question. Why would you choose to mess up our nation's number one industry, tourism? Why would you choose to mess up a future for your little brother, your little sister, or even your own little children by promoting gangs? I'm Carlos Reed, asking you to create the kind of future that you want to see by choosing to ask the question, why? Hi, I'm Dr. Pinder. During this global pandemic, we ask for you to be responsible. As we fight the COVID-19 virus together, we would like to encourage you to do the following. Wash your hands. Cover your mouth and nose with a flex elbow or tissue when coughing and sneezing. Practice social distancing by staying six feet apart. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. And if you must go out, wear a mask. We stay here for you. Please stay home for us. To those of you on the front line, we salute you as we continue this fight together. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Health in conjunction with GD Media Solutions and this television station. Welcome back. The, the domestic securities market is preparing for further transition, which essentially will allow the government to better track and record both registered and unregistered securities within this country. Recently, the Central Bank of the Bahamas made public its search for consultants to develop the government securities operational guidelines. Once secured, the BGSD will create the framework to guide participants and system operators on best practices and outcomes for the platform. The rules will also provide clear guidelines for government securities market activity based upon principles of efficiency and security. 
More businesses are coming forward to tell all about the tremendous impact COVID-19 has had on their business. Owner of the Bahamas Nightlife, Sharon Johnson, says while COVID-19 may have been an issue for dozens of businesses going belly up across this country, it's not the major factor for their demise. In fact, he says a lot of businesses are closed because they did not position themselves in becoming more convenient for their customers by using social media and other alternative methods. The way the world's going, you know, in the Bahamas, our culture is to see biz, uh, our customers in face to face inside the shop, you know, so unless that happens, we feel like our business isn't making money. But this is where conglomerates like Amazon make billions of dollars because they provide a convenient option where you can purchase from wherever you are. And we, we, we lack uh, innovation. Our culture in the Bahamas is word about marketing. Bahamians don't believe in spending money on marketing on the whole. Um, but you don't have to be the one to know what marketing is. That's where professional co professionals come in and they're hired to do this for you. We don't understand that colors matter. Post, just posting on Facebook is not marketing. You know, you have to understand that wording matters, uh, imagery, and all of these things have to be strategically placed in order to get the audience that you want. Johnson founded Bahamas Nightlife nine years ago and says keeping the business promotion online in a sluggish economy has been quite a hassle and so he had to suspend it temporarily. However, he remains hopeful though that things will get better with time. It takes a few dollars to provide a platform as such for people and I think I need to go back into the educating persons on why they need to be a part um, because people don't see the value up front but uh, it, it's going to take some time so I suspended it. I'm, I'm looking at some other things and seeing how best because my, my position is I'm going to make uh, the Bahamas great. I'm going to help businesses be a part of the global options. I've always thought that my product doesn't have to stay here. You understand? So that's, that's a part of my position. COVID-19 has caused many around the world and the world to reevaluate their economic standings. Manager at Fidelity Bahamas Financial Center Dominic Ferguson says as a result of the pandemic, there has been a curb in spending habits. We have some people that were able to save because some people did, couldn't go anywhere and had the means and fortunately had a job that they were still getting income from. So it was kind of easy. Those who were laid off, I'm sure, it's very difficult for them to save. So again, it's about timing. Sometimes you may not be able to save. You may need to restructure some stuff. Meantime, resident concerns over debris and derelict vehicles in the South Beach community is getting the attention of authorities. Area Member of Parliament, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, says the issues need to be addressed. Over 350 uh, derelict vehicles have been removed and we are continuing with that process. We have just over this past week have moved over 30 vehicles, derelict vehicles. It is quite disappointing and to be honest with you that so many vehicles have been left on the side of the road in people's yards and so on and we have appealed to people if you want a vehicle removed at no cost to you just let us know and the many of them have done so. What is also disappointing is as fast as we move them it seems as if more keeps coming in. As the tourism industry remains in economic uncertainty following COVID-19's towering control last year, many have now began to consider that the time may be now to explore a new industry nationally. And while there are viable options like banking on the table, some are going back to the past to sponging. According to operator of My Bahama Sponge, a 2009 introduction to the industry in Mangrove Key Andros led to the opening of his business, which today continues to soar. To be honest with you, this, this is not an easy business. Uh, this is a business, I suppose, like most businesses, there are ups and downs, especially when you're starting from ground zero. And, um, and so I started this at ground zero. Um, nobody knew about me, nobody knew about the company. Um, this was a new product even to myself. Uh, because I, at that point, I'm still, you know, I'm still in the position where I'm still learning uh, things about the sponges, you know, how to harvest them properly and that type of stuff. Burroughs explains beyond the challenges, the opportunity for expanding his suite of products remain abundant like his back scrubbers. He encourages others to consider a profession in the field. One of the rules in marketing is if you have a new product and that product either meets a need 
or solves a problem, you stand a good chance of having a successful product. I was able to sell sea scrubbers to persons who knew I was in the sponge business and had known me for several years and had never bought a sponge from me. But the minute I attached that sponge to a stick and they realized that there's parts on their back that they couldn't reach, that they can now take this and wash their backs, it's now something that they can use to wash their body. So this is a practical um, 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 tool that you can use. The men of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity observed putting on a lecture series this week reflecting on the life of civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King. Guest speaker Dr. Everett Ward said it's incumbent on the fraternity to lead the way in encouraging young men to exercise their right to vote. Like your brothers in the United States, we must increase our voter registration numbers. Dr. King did not sacrifice his life on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel for us to abdicate our responsibility to vote in every election. So I applaud the brothers of Phi Mu Chapter as they work under the banner of our national program of voteless people as a hopeless people to engage the male students on the campus of the University of the Bahamas. Stay close, we've got more right after this. You're watching The Morning Edition. Everybody, hey, hey, on TV, look, hey, on TV. Mom, guess what it is? That's me. Fountain, do you see me? Hey, on television. I gotta tell my girlfriend, hey, on television. Hello? Babe, turn your television to ZNS. Quick, I know television. I don't have a TV in there. We have Wi-Fi, though. We have Wi-Fi. Th that's fine. They upgrade now. You can watch it live from your phone. You just have to download the app. All right, hold on. Go to the app store, type in ZNS, download the app, and you'll be able to watch ZNS straight from your phone. Are we on the phone over there? Get your news and more anytime, anywhere with the new ZNS app. Stay connected from around the globe with our live stream news updates. All in the palm of your hand. You can also listen to the ZNS Radio Network for your favorite music. Go into your Apple or Google Play Store and download the ZNS app today. Doesn't care. Miss Isa Stein, now I still gotta pay. Welcome back. Well, the college basketball season rolling along last evening. Shaquille Butters continuing a stellar season. He had 16 points and 13 rebounds for the Williams Baptist Eagles, but that came in an 81-63 loss to Central Baptist. Butters and the Eagles will try and rebound tomorrow against Columbia College. The news much better last night for Blaze Darling and the Warner Royals that they won 79-63 over Coastal Georgia. Darling finished up with six points and six rebounds. The Royals also play tomorrow against Weber International. Javon Ferguson and the William Jewell Cardinals coming out on the losing end last evening, 70-59. to Ferguson had four points. The Cardinals play again, uh, play again rather tomorrow against Maryville. As for Cedric Delancey and the Northwestern Ohio Racers, they are still winless on the season after going down last night 83-61 to the University of the Rio Grande. Delancey had three points, four rebounds, and four assists. The Racers don't play again until Saturday. And that's a wrap for us this morning. For the entire morning team, I'm LaDawn Davis. Make it a great day, everyone. Sometimes I'm so thirsty.